And so when I expand this out, I can see the HTTP post as the server viewed it, and I can see that there was a JDBC select call that happened on the server. So what we've done then is combined all the sources of latency, client, network, server, all into one view inside SpeedTracer. It helps you drill down and find out any source of latency whatsoever. So Spring Insight comes with um, the developer edition of TC Server as part of Spring Source Tools. And that's great for tuning performance at your desktop. At some point, you feel like it's good enough. It's time to deploy, right? If you've used Google plugin for Eclipse, you know that deploying is really just essentially one button click. There's an App Engine icon there inside Eclipse. You click that icon, it goes to App Engine and continues running as it did before. So we clicked that button. And so now we have the same application running on App Engine. And the network is a bit slow. So this is the same application, same code, uh, simple upload. We've added some additional data to make it more realistic. Um, but if you've ever done any sort of real performance tuning, you know that what, the way it works on your desk is not the way it's going to work in production, right? So you need the same sort of tools we were talking about, but you need them to work even on your production server in the cloud. Well, it turns out App Engine introduced something that's almost exactly like Spring Insight two months ago. It's called AppStats. And if you've seen AppStats, you, you realize that, wow, if you could get that data, pull that into SpeedTracer, then you could always do diagnostics and performance tuning even when your code is running in production on App Engine. And indeed, we did do that and integrated it back into SpeedTracer. So as you can click around here, use the app a bit, we'll come back over to SpeedTracer, zoom out, take a look at some of the network uh, events here at the end. And, well, the network here is horribly slow, but you see these, these icons popping in. That indicates that we have app stats data uh, integrated back into Speed Tracer. Here you can see where we've hit the App Engine data store. So you, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That was, that, that was not really, I wasn't seeking applause, I was just gathering my thoughts. <laughs> uh, although it is cool, I think. Uh, Okay, so these are all tools, right? We've been talking about the tools, editing, debugging, deployment, uh, performance tuning, and so on. Tools are definitely a huge part of the story. But to be really productive, you also need great widget libraries and a great app framework. Now, we've been a little deficient in the widget uh, area in GWT in the sense that people want easy to use widgets that are, that are, that are you drop them on the, on, or you, you code them into your app, it's very easy to connect those widgets to data that lives in, in the cloud or on the database or so on. And they want to make it really easy to connect widgets to each other with um, a, a minimum of glue code. So we've taken this really seriously as part of GWT 2.1, and so we've got a new set of data presentation widgets that we're really, really excited about. Now, if you're like us, you've seen dozens of Ajax widget demos where they show you the kitchen sink, right? And uh, so I wouldn't presume that you'd be especially excited to see some new widgets. So I was thinking about how I can actually make you interested in this anyway. So I said, well, you know, we know that these widgets have been designed to be lightweight, fast, small, and work with massive data sets. But let me actually figure out a way to convince you that that actually works that well. I said to the team, like, hey, let's do some ridiculous amount of data, like 18 million records and show that everything still works fast. I was joking, but they, they really took me seriously. And so uh, yesterday, I think the latest numbers were we had uh, filled this database full of um, 125,000 employees, um, 5,000 expense reports, each of which has multiple line items for a total of about 20 million line items. So a non-trivial amount of data. I think 125,000 employees for an expense report app is, is probably towards the high end. So now I want you to take a look at the widgets and think about how this app is performing, knowing that we're working against a database with you know, 20 million plus records. Okay? So what sort of things do you want to do? Let's see. I'll, uh, I'll page. And I'm, here I'm paging through 5 million records, expense reports. Try this yourself, because on a, on a non-congested wireless, you'll find that it, it pages about as fast as you'd want it to. Actually, this does sort of undermine my point, doesn't it? <laughs> Wired. 
We'll see if the wired connection kicks in. Am I, am I, am I brave enough to do this? Yeah, okay. Much better, right? So, so that was what you were supposed to get excited about. Everybody needs to page through five million records, and when you do that, you want it to be fast. Uh, okay, so uh, sorting is often uh, done. So you click on the header, and you want to sort quickly. Quickly. Sort by date. You know, I mean, we're talking about seconds, which seems like a long time in demos, but when you think about sorting five million records inside your own company, if you have to wait a couple seconds, not too bad. And as you can see, as it warms up through more use, it gets faster and faster and faster. Okay, so maybe I, wanted, I want to uh, narrow down by department. Right now, they're all intermingled. I click on that, and I'm looking among the five million, the ones that are just in engineering, or maybe finance, or maybe marketing. Maybe I want to drill down to an individual person, also very fast, right? You saw before how quickly we can jump into the details of any person we pick among the 20 million line items, right? Another neat feature is the ability to uh, search and highlight within the page. So here we see a lot of expense reports with W slash. So I'll type on a keystroke by keystroke, you'll see it matching the records in the current page. W slash space Z. So that keeps up with me. That's fantastic. And now I can press enter, and it will do an actual query that will give me back a result set that matches my search term. So I'm going to press enter, one, two, three, enter. And now among the five million expense reports, I'm getting the ones that happen to match my search term, and I can continue to page through those at my leisure. Thanks. OK, quick refresh of where we are. A few minutes ago, you saw us start with an empty directory. In less than 200 keystrokes, we had the scaffolding app. We used the tools that now are integrated and work really well together, spend a, spent a couple of days to create a more full-featured application. We tuned it on the desktop uh, using Spring Insight and Speed Tracer. With one click, we deployed it to App Engine. We continued to tune it using Speed Tracer plus App Stats. And we uploaded a massive amount of data. It literally took a couple of days to get that much data in the database, as a matter of fact. And the app still runs exactly like you'd want it to. We think that's pretty cool. And we're excited for you guys to try these tools yourself. Yeah. Thanks. The, cl the clicker is right there. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Ben. If you want to learn more, there are sessions. You can find them on your Android app. You can, you can find them in the schedule where you can listen to the sessions and talk to the engineers afterwards. What you just saw is not just a pretty cool app built on stage. What you also saw is the tools that let you build those kind of apps with that kind of performance for your company, your needs, your, your use cases. Well, the second promise we made is we we're going to show you how to make those apps mobile ready. And I'm happy to say that that exact same widget library that Bruce just showed you, that Bruce just showed you how it performs really well on a laptop at work, that same widget library is ready for mobile devices, makes it much easier to take one application and say, I want to access this data from all the devices I'm using, from tablets, from phones, which matches the real world use needs of applications like this. So to show you how that works, I'm going to ask Ben to come back up, ask Bruce to come back up, and they're going to show you same expense app how it runs on mobile devices using the same widget libraries. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. So yeah, all the cool widgets against a massive data set, that was all in a desktop browser. But if your companies are, are like Google, uh, chances are people are not at their desk all the time. They've all, they've all these new great mobile devices, and you want to make sure these apps work well and are available on the device that your users happen to actually be using. Well, as it turns out, when we designed these new widgets that we, I was just bragging about, we made sure from the beginning that they work particularly well on mobile devices. And, and as you know, you have to think about mobile devices are typically slower CPUs to save battery. You've got slower network connections and so on. 